So now we'll look at this concept, what are the limits, what is not intangible cultural heritage. So again, as conceptualized by UNESCO, intangible cultural heritage means yes. The cultural practices, beliefs that communities, groups, and in some cases individuals recognize as part of their cultural heritage. Well, right there, that could be anything and everything. Another characteristic, it's transmitted from generation to generation. It's constantly recreated by communities and groups in response to their environment, their interaction with nature, their history. It provides communities and groups with a sense of identity and social cohesion from my memory. Again, this could be applied to anything, right? Or not. Well, according to UNESCO, uh, cultural practices that don't abide by human rights laws cannot get this designation as intangible cultural heritage. So examples such as neo-Nazism, female genital mutilation, Whistler's War example from earlier. While these are uh, cultural practices that are uh, degrading to human beings, they're terrible in my opinion, they do in some way fit into this idea of intangible heritage. There are communities who value these practices. They have survived to today. There are people who are practicing them. So. It's interesting to think about this. But what are some other parameters that, that, that may exist? So I was thinking about intangible cultural heritage from where um, I come from, New York. Obviously, there's the accent that we see in films and television, New York. Um, while uh, that may be a bit of a myth, there are some people who do talk like that. <laughs> but I was also uh, thinking about something else that's quite popular, New York pizza a particularly slice that you get on the street. Pizzeria is everywhere. This image is from a website that tries to map the best pizzerias in the city. Brooklyn, uh, Queens, the Bronx, Staten Island, Manhattan, of course, in the middle. Um, is this intangible cultural heritage? Uh, the, 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 the New York pizza is different from, from uh, Italian pizza, where it originated. It was brought over, this idea, or it developed from Italian immigrants in the early 20th century to New York City. The ownership of pizzerias, the knowledge of making these pizzas, is knowledge that's passed down from generation to generation. There are old pizzerias in New York City, and pictures of the forefathers, the grandfathers, and et cetera, on the wall behind. Uh, um, and so really, I thought, this is intangible cultural heritage. But would UNESCO recognize it as? Is it too popular? Do, do, do we care, really? So in, is intangible cultural heritage, does it really mean pastness? It's old, traditional. Is it exotic, beautiful, aesthetically pleasing, colorful costumes, intricate dance steps? Is it only really indigenous or, or the, 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 the expressions of ethnic minorities? Is it also only threatened? Is that intrinsic to that, that, to that uh, intangible idea that it's on the brink of extinction, it's gonna die? So can intangible cultural heritage be contemporary? Can it be a slice of greasy pizza? Can it be ugly? And who's deciding this? Can it be widespread and popular? Can it be rap music? Can it be thriving? Deakin and others have argued that this idea of intangible heritage has a connotation of it only being non-Western heritage. They argue having the 2003 convention as separate from the 1972 convention, so we had the separation of intangible and tangible. This may perpetuate the idea that heritage of the West is tangible, monumental, immovable, and thus the heritage of the non-West is intangible. So that may be a hidden meaning uh, uh, within, within this idea of intangible heritage. I would also add not only non-West or ethnic minority or indigenous peoples all throughout the world. Here we have, uh, I, I love this picture of an American contestant, the Miss World competition, in a completely appropriated costume from Native American uh, cultures. I don't know which one, I don't think she does either. Um, and what, what is she really saying in that outfit? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, she's representing America, and yet she chooses something exotic, uh, indigenous. Yeah, really interesting. But this non-Western idea, forgive me if that's not good terminology, I'm using it as others use it, this separation of West, non-West. But really, there is a high representation of non-Western uh, uh, nations that have signed on to the convention. And that is part of the history of the convention, how the ball started rolling 
to develop the convention. So there really is uh, uh, this idea of non-Western heritage. Uh, is that negative? I, we can all talk about this. Is there also this exoticist bias? So again, I use her, she's great, she, she illustrates so many points. Um, Brown argues that the policy, the convention, the framework, is oddly reminiscent of early anthropology, which was driven by the conviction that primitive cultures should be documented in their entirety, from basketry techniques and healing arts to kinship systems and, uh, excuse me, kinship systems and religious beliefs because their extinction was inevitable. So obviously this is exotic peoples, far off locales again, but also this idea of death, this extinction, it's inevitable, it's impending. So that's another idea that could be argued to be intrinsic or part of in the, the concept of intangible cultural heritage, looking at the preamble of the convention it states recognizing that the processes of globalization, like pin it on globalization and social transformation, give rise to grave threats of deterioration, disappearance and destruction of intangible cultural heritage. Well, Hafstein argues that, that this idea of globalization is in fact so closely intertwined with intangible heritage, so centrally involved in its uh, discursive construction that the two cannot be disentangled. The menace of globalization, the threat of death, extinction, must be considered intrinsic to the concept of intangible heritage. And what's missing on this slide is that intangible cultural heritage equals the threat of globalization. So just some things to think about. On to this idea of applicating, uh, uh, applying, excuse me, uh, the, the concept, uh, uh, which is inherently selecting what uh, cultural practices get this label. So some of the key questions at this moment, which cultural practices beliefs get the, get the title of intangible cultural heritage? This is mainly happening in inventories. Which ones get selected? The international lists. M Montira uh, mentioned yesterday, it, it could be a breeding contest. It has been with the Masterpieces program. I'll talk about that in a moment. So again, only the aesthetically beautiful or, or pleasing uh, uh, and, and positive uh, expressions uh, uh, get recognized. But most important, who is making these decisions? Who's designating? Who has the expertise to, to, to even uh, look at all this diversity and say, oh yes, this one can represent all others? Where are the limits of the selection process? Inherent to selecting anything, making any list is exclusion. There are those that don't make it onto the list. So what gets excluded? And the flip side to that is if we didn't exclude anything, these lists would be like phone books and even more. They would be never ending scrolls of information. So really, we must select, right? And half sign notes in that chapter, I believe it's in your reading. What is remarkable here is the acknowledgement that traditions have to be recognized as intangible cultural heritage that they are proposed as such, but that in order to be given recognition to get that label, authorities must, also who, who are the authorities? Authorities must assess their importance and abdicate amongst them. All right, so it's a negotiation process. And this is that idea of the bureaucratization of culture. All right, who's making these decisions? What level? Are local people involved? Are the practitioners, the owners, the agents of intangible heritage involved? Do they control it? 